Techsmith. Bam. Techsmith. Well, well, well. Good. What Hold program on. does a Jedi use to open PDF files? Adobe One Kenobi. For a time, Princess Leia had turned to the dark side. She was called Ella Vader. Why does Yoda never pick up the tab when you go out drinking with him? He's always a little short. What did Yoda ride as a kid? A do cycle. There is no try. What droid always takes the long way around? R2 Detour. I've turned to the dark side. My name is now Darth Krimos, Sith Lord of Crime. <laughs> Darth Krimos? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Damn! Krimos got the fucking Darth promotion? Ah, oh, god damn it. Now I'm fucking jealous of Krimos. God damn it. Lord, I'm about to bust. <laughs> oh, wow. That is very different energy than Leslie. <laughs> Chat. Good morning. Good morning. How are you all doing on this lovely, lovely freaking Diablo day? And also the first day of Pride Month. But Diablo day. I'm very excited. Hey, good morning, Noonchi. How you doing? Tech, what do you think of this? Big boob boo, boo big biggie boo biggie pridey. Boo, wait, how do you pronounce that? Boo booby biggie pridey. It's pretty good. A little bit a little bit of Luigi with some biggie boobies. I mean, that's just about everybody's dream come true. What do you want for Father's Day? I want to be prepared. Um, oh my goodness, you know? Oh God. <laughs> um, you know, that's that's such a great question. Um, uh, surprise me. Why are you not wearing a Diablo shirt? Kato Dragon, last night I literally realized that I don't have a Diablo shirt. So I went and I bought a Diablo thermos. That I got coming, so I'll have a Diablo Thermos every day. But I bought, I, I wore my Elden Ring shirt because it's my other most favorite game. I know, I'm a fake fan. I know, I'm a fake fan. I'm a fake! I'm a phony! Paint your own shirt. Fuck, that's a good idea, Caldy. <laughs> Hello, Joker. Yes, that is a very good emote. Flame requested that I do that pose when the stream opened. You know... Just get completely naked and do that on camera for you guys. Um, but, uh, you know, I was a little bit afraid that that would happen. <laughs> it's not too late. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow thank you for that pin flame i didn't even see that 313 is going all in on pride month <laughs> how long will the stream be today uh let's see probably it's eight right now and we'll go until like probably at least 10 so what's that 14 hours we got 14 hours starting now probably for the stream possibly longer it's gonna be a long one it's gonna be a long one yeah i'm fucking ready i am so fucking ready basically the stream doesn't even start that's me. Literally me today. 
That's me getting ready for Diablo. <laughs> Give me that long stream. Oh God, my nips are hard already. Wow, goodness gracious. <laughs> Got your pee collector on? Um, uh, you know, maybe I should go put it on. When does Diablo 4 come out today? Yes, today at 4 p.m. Pacific for the Super Ultra. I paid way too much money for this Super Deluxe version. You got beans? Yeah, I know. I'll do the fucking bean. Just not right now. Just not right now. I'll do it. I'll do it later. Not now, but later. You know. Eh. Oh, God. <laughs> it's the... <laughs> it's the come here boy song. <laughs> come here boy. Come here boy. Come here boy. Come here boy. It's a good song. It's a fucking good song. Got me all hot and bothered now. <laughs> Chat, I'm so fucking excited. We're gonna talk about some lore stuff. We're gonna watch some fun videos. We're gonna get ourselves completely fucking ready for Diablo 4. I'm so fucking excited. Holy shit. I don't know the last time I've been this excited for a fucking video game. DOS! Hey, DOS, thank you so much, man. What a lovely message. Thank you so much, DOS. Uh, squ uh, squall. <laughs> um, squall, listen, all we can just hope for the best, basically, right now. For a fucking video game, probably Cobalt Care. That's true. Cobalt Care is a pretty great fucking video game. If you don't take walkies, breaks, and food breaks during the stream, then I'm gonna come bop you. Yeah, don't worry. The plan is basically um, at regular stream end time, uh, we are going to uh, we're gonna take a little break. I'm gonna put up some other videos, some reruns, some stuff like that. So I'm gonna take a, a, a lunch break and a little bit of a pause. Oh my god, we need some chill music. I need some chill music. Uh, so yeah, we'll, at regular stream end time, I'm gonna take a little break. So don't worry, there, I'm, I will be healthy. I will be responsible. I will not die of a blood clot in my leg in the middle of the stream. Um, can I post a clip in chat? Yes, Forrester, please do, please do. There it is, there it is. Hi, hi, Maxwell. Yeah, hi, hi, Maxwell. How are you, Maxwell? Are you excited for Diablo? Mm-hmm. Maxwell's excited for Diablo. Um, ba 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 boom. Uh oh wow yeah 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 no I I I know that my risk is pretty low I I I get some mobility in my life thank goodness <laughs> what the hell flame um okay let me see um sorry to interrupt Mr Stern but I had meetings yesterday and missed all the beans do you remember what they were for the accounting um <clears throat> was yesterday yesterday was just the one bean right and wasn't it just the booger bean. I think that was it. Wait, was there two or was there just one? Does anybody remember what the beans were yesterday? I forget. You did two boogers? Okay, and the second one was pear, right? Two, booger and juicy pear. Yeah, I had a delicious juicy pear. God damn, yesterday was a good day. Oh! 
going to be honest, I have no idea what classes are in Diablo 4. What classes are there and what are you going to play? Coraline, this is the perfect question. The classes in Diablo 4 are the Sorcerer, the Rogue, the Necromancer, the Druid, and the Barbarian. Um, and I will be going Rogue, absolutely. I'll be doing the old roguey roguey. Oh, thank you. Oh, goodness gracious me. How do you feel about having to play with others in the overworld? Uh, I think that's fucking awesome. I love it because either you're playing all by yourself and there's no one around and it's basically a solo game or you get increased experience for other people being around. That's pretty fucking great. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good way to handle that. <laughs> Kind of surprised there's no paladin? Well, I think there probably will be at some point. I really like the MMO uh, Diablo. I mean, I love this. I mean, yeah, it basically isn't an MMO. It's basically World of Diablo, which I, I'm a big fan of. Zelda stream when? I mean, first I got to learn how to make that big, big old pump robot. <laughs> Um, uh, Big Z Dub, what? This will be the first Diablo I've ever played, not because I'm young, I'm 34, just never got into Diablo. Well, Gamer Connected, we're going to have a big old community presence, all helping each other. And uh, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. So we just sitting around waiting for Diablo to start. I mean, basically, Lexi, we're gonna we're gonna muck around. Uh, we're, I got lots of videos for us to watch. Um, some funny videos, some lore videos, some uh, prep videos. We got lots of stuff uh, to do. And then you know we might play some long drive while we're waiting while we're chatting. Um, oh the calendar you want to say hello to mr june on the calendar well that seems appropriate that seems appropriate all right chat this is this is may this is the man that we're saying goodbye to what a man what a mighty, mighty, mighty good man. And as we say goodbye to May, we look under his kilt and we find June. Oh, goodness. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm. I'm. Wow. Feet I'm and everything. Wow. Feet for free? Oh man! <laughs> Goodness gracious! Oh no, he's hot! <laughs> wow! Well, hello, June. <laughs> you know what they say about a man with big socks? Yep. He's just missing the sandals, and that's you. Aw, thanks. <laughs> man, no one is that gay straight to not want to bang that man. Right, Look ammo? Come gutters on that boy. I agree. <laughs> um, okay, now, uh, listen, before we get going, um, Forrester made this fantastic clip. Uh, I want to show you guys the, the new fantastic clip. We go here and we do this. We do this. And we do this. All right, here we go. Let's make sure the volume's okay. Oh, it's coming through the wrong volume. Okay, hold on. It is pumped through the wrong goddamn channel. I can fix, I can fix, I can fix. I wonder why it's coming through that one. That's okay. 
I can fix. And. <laughs> Do you want to know how innocent K is? So K was around when I played the Jerk Myself Off All Day song, right? It's a catchy little jam and she's singing it and we're all having fun. It's a fun little song. And then she asks me, what's a cream pie? <laughs> so I said, don't worry about it. <laughs> What was that? You want me to give you a cream pie? <laughs> and then she gave me a hug and she's like, is that a cream pie? And I said, yes, that's a cream pie. Yep. That's a, you got it in one. It's a big <laughs> hug. <laughs> Come on, group cream pie. <laughs> Sorry that I put you on blast, Kay, but the story is so amazing. <laughs> that's right, Chad. Make sure to go give the world a big old cream pie. <laughs> go give the world a big old cream pie. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. Kay wanted it to be known that uh, she was joking when she said that a cream pie was a big hug. She knew that it wasn't a big hug. She wants to, she wants people to know that she knew it wasn't. She didn't know what it was, but she knew it wasn't a big hug. <laughs> <laughs> um, Forrester is uh, so absolutely wonderful. Um, Forrester wanted to make sure that that was an okay clip to do. Uh, and so um, uh, Kay and I both reviewed it before we posted it. And uh, Kay loved it. We both laughed so much at it. We really enjoyed it. Um... <laughs> but that was Kay's one big concern. She was like, they know I didn't think cream pie was a big hug, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah forester is amazing i thought that was very 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 fucking cool of forester to check before uh posting that um and it was yeah that was really cool that was the uh, forester nice one that was fucking great it's definitely a hug though right yep definitely a hug <laughs> De definitely a hug <laughs> Uh, I'm clicking the play button on Diablo 4 and nothing's happening, so I just want to update you on that. I have an idea. Eat beans until Diablo. I'll literally die. That would be the only way to assure that I don't make it to Diablo 4 launch. Eat that fucking bean. Okay, fucking gosh. I'll eat that goddamn bean! Whose bean was it anyways? Whose bean am I even eating? Tangia Alex? I'm sorry. Motherfucking goddamn Tangia fucking Alex beamed me. I'm Alex. I'm going to watch what you fucking gamba on and I'm going to throw it. I'm going to delete your goddamn fucking tech box. Top five anime betrayal, right? Viv, what the fuck? Holy shit. Uh, please, please let me know if my back broke your knife. I'll buy you a new one. No, I'm not stalling. I'm not stalling. I'm right here. See, I'm right. We're here. I'm here. Look at that beautiful bean footage. I'm, worried, I'm, worried. I'm doing it right now. I'm right there. I'm getting the music. Okay, look. There you go. Some bullshit right there. All right, bean time. Boop. Oh my god, it's another fucking booger bean and a blue bean, which is illegal, so I won't have that one. So I'll eat the fucking booger bean. Got a mortgage riding on these tech bucks. Odd question. Is the 314 in your name for a specific reason, uh, too? Yes. Actually, it is. Uh, the 314, I mean, the whole name, TechSmith314, 
is a reference to a character in an old video game um, called Hellgate London. Uh, there were in the game there were a whole bunch of people who were techsmiths who would build tech technology, and number three one four was not responsible for technology, but actually responsible for taking care of uh, a very crazy eccentric man who stuck an alien to his face. Uh, juicy pear or booger. Uh, chat, the Gamba's up. Gamba is up. He also uh, made TechSmith314 um, jump into the well of eternal happiness, which was a giant fire in the ground. Hey, this is the telling, this is the telling sign. <clears throat> Yeah, Mando, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, omitted, exactly, yes. The, the prophecy was foretold. <laughs> Chat, this is going to determine how the launch goes. If this is a good bean, we are going to have an absolutely smooth, flawless launch. Pear means perfect launch. Booger means big problems. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's just how it's gonna go. This is, this is the vibe check for the day. <laughs> this is the vibe check for the day. Either I lose 83k bloints or launch sucks, you butthole, or either the launch is awesome or you win, right? Okay, chat. Whoa, that's a cool, wow, bean spinner? That's a great emote. Okay. Okay, here we go. Here is the Diablo 4 server launch. Bean. If it's juicy pear, it's gonna be a perfect launch, okay? Let's hope for that juicy pear. Mmm, pear. Oh, I'm so excited for the flawless launch. Oh, oh, pear. Oh, I love pear so much. Ah! I just love Pear so much. I just want to play some Dying Light See? 2. Uh, all gone. All gone. Mm. <laughs> Juicy Pear. <laughs> no, Frey, no, I clearly said it was a juicy pear. The Diablo launch is going to be perfect, okay? <laughs> Please remember who you are if Diablo 4 go... Plot twist, it's Dying Light 2 today. I actually fucking hate Diablo. I've been the mastermind of this whole Diablo deception. There is no Diablo 4. It's actually, when you click Diablo 4 play button, all you play is Dying Light 2. I just saw the D4 launch was canceled and it was because some nerd lied about a bean? 
I have no comment. Could you imagine if there was like a D4 dev in here who just lost all their tech bucks and they're like, fuck this guy. <laughs> I'm canceling the goddamn launch. <gasps> Whoa, five cats with a hundred fucking dollars says donating until good bean for good d4 launch you fucking monster baba booey 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 all right then let's fucking go let's fucking go <laughs> what the fuck? Baba Bowie. <laughs> remember when I said we'd bean you all dance to playing Diablo 4? Yeah, I do remember. <laughs> all right. Bean numero dos. Let's get that good bean for that Diablo launch. <laughs> nice boob cam, you whore. No wonder this website is going to shit. I think you mean this This website is finally coming into its own. Hey, I heard you weren't playing Diablo 4. Why not? Are you kidding me? It's going to be the only thing I play. Okay, it's, uh, it's a rotten egg or... Um, oops. Whoops. Oh, I gotta pay out the other one. Ah, oh, ha, ha. Uh, okay, wait, here you go. It was a booger. Let's start another one. Let's start another one. It is. Now, I've got bad news, chat. <clears throat> there are two beans. <laughs> No, it was a fucking booger. It was it was a booger. I lied to you, Chad. Uh, two minute timer, please. Try and give you two minutes. There you go. Two minutes. Make sure to refresh if you don't see it. I trusted you? I lied. I know, I lied to you. I lied to you. <laughs> now we can never believe another word you say. Uh, that's appropriate, though. Maybe he's always lying. Maybe I've always been lying, Cuddle. Don't let me down again like last time. Don't worry. Well, okay, but here's the thing. We have two beans. If this is a good bean, then the next one's probably going to be bad. And then we're back to a bad launch. We got two beans. This is the first of two. We had the Reaper scream from five cats, and then the uh, Kirby sucked my head. Is this bean delicious cream cheese frosting or well a... I can't believe it. Pukers. 
pukers. <laughs> Wait, a Kirby means a bean since when? It's a hundred dollar Tangia. Kirby is a 100 fucking dollar Tangia. So it counts as a bean. All right, it's just about bean time. <laughs> you timed me out for cum on Gay Pride Month, Angie. Metal makes a good point. <laughs> okay, here we go. You always do a free bean in the morning, or do people just redeem them in the morning? I uh, always see you do one early. Uh, people always redeem it early. People always redeem that gosh dang channel point bean early in the morning. Okay, so uh, here's here's to the D4 launch. Let's see, what do we got? I couldn't. I will never financially recover from this. Oh God, I can't drink coffee with that shit. Uh, it was rotten egg. It was a mother effing rotten egg. Oh, uh, okay. All right, here we go. This is the final bean so far. This is for the Diablo 4 launch. Okay, listen, it gave me a blue bean. It's, it's the prophecy. Okay, listen. It said blue bean for the Diablo 4 launch. Do you know what that means? It means that it's guaranteed to be good. Not allowed. Wow. Rules are rules. Now we do. We do have rules. We do have rules. Either way, the bean is tasty. I know, but the the bean boozle rules. All right, we got Stinky Sock or Tutti Fruity, which is probably the most confusing of them because it always tastes out, starts out a little bit sweet. Rules are meant to be broken, like buildings or people. Whoa, I don't think buildings are meant to be broken. All right, this bean is either. You can actually pinpoint the second when his heart rips in half. <laughs> Judy Fruity or Stinky Socks? Gamba's going, chat. Gamba's going. Make sure to refresh chat if you uh, missed it. <sighs> I have to share this. I had a dream. I was so excited about Diablo. I became a reporter about video games and interviewed you about the game and how the launch experience was. That's a good goddamn dream. That's a great fucking dream. <laughs> I fucking love that. Um, it was a lot of fun, and I had a great time, and I really enjoyed my class and all the armor and how much fun we had. <laughs> I had to pee pee. What was, the, what was the last bean? It was rotten egg, Frey. It was a goddamn rotten egg. Not a good dream now that you've cursed the launch with bad beans. Don't worry. I have faith that this one's going to be a delicious tutti fruity. Tutti fruity. How much similarity do you draw between Diablo and D&D? &D? Uh, oh, quite a bit, actually. Yeah, I would say quite a lot. Especially earlier Diablo games. 
What did Kay think a cream pie was again? Okay, well, she she asks if it was a big hug. <laughs> Obviously, Dabble is a little faster paced. Yeah, yeah, a little faster paced. But no, they share a lot of similarities for sure. Beepity boop, beepity boop. Someone bought me a digital deluxe as a gift for my job opening soon. What the fuck? Full metal, congrats. Is D4 short for D&D and D&D? &D? You got it. That's exactly it. Dungeons and Dicks and Diablo and Dicks. Did you explain to Kay uh, what it was or is she still innocent? She Googled it. <laughs> Okay, let's go. The, it's time for the gambo. Let's go. Here we go. For the good launch. Tutti Fruity. Tutti Fruity for the good launch. Let's go. Come on. Hot diggity damn! Yeah! It's time! It's gonna be a good god damn lunch! Thank you. Thank you for the extra beans. Now we are finally ready for a Diablo 4. Good hey, don't you don't you people smash my face. Or whatever that is. Bongo smash. And now you go and totally redeem yourself. Thank you. <laughs> ah, yes. Let's go. It's... What? What are, what are you doing? What are you... What are you... But we had a good bean. We had the good bean. You're gonna ruin the Diablo 4 launch. You're ruining everything. God damn it. is secure now yours is still questionable how dare you do that how dare you all right what if, oh my god all right fucking fucking all right toasted marshmallow or a stink bug <sighs> what is going on in here tech uh gamma heads Nobody's been able to answer that question yet. Many people have tried, but uh, nobody, nobody's been able to answer that. <sighs> uh, KG, oh yeah, no, I know who it is, KG. Uh, I just literally, I'm a nobody. There's, I will get no response. I will get zero response. These guys have stream teams and managers and stuff like that to talk to people. Uh, I'm just a dude with an email address. <laughs> You're not a nobody to me? Aw, oh, thanks. But to Diablo, I am a nobody. <laughs> You're their dad. You know what? Maybe I should lead with that. <laughs> I'm a splatter. I'll start with that. <laughs> Hello.
Hello, Mr. Diablo 4 developer. Um, I, uh, this is gonna be weird. You see, one time, one night, dear son. <laughs> All right, next Gamba's up, chat. Toasted marshmallow or stink bug? <laughs> it's your father here. <laughs> um, so do these go to a charity fund or are you just getting paid to do this by parasocial chatters who enjoy the same reaction a hundred times over just seems overdone at this point but hope it's a nice pocket lining um, you know I can't tell if that's supposed to be dunking on me or chat more um, but uh, you know some people, some people enjoy things that other people don't enjoy. Um, <laughs> you see, <laughs> that's chat. Chat, chat thinks it's funnier every fucking time. <laughs> um, and if, if you don't like it, that's okay. If I've eaten so many bean boozles, that uh, you hate me forever? Her shenanigans are cheeky and fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, his shenanigans are cruel and tragic. <laughs> Which makes them not shenanigans at all, really. Evil sh exactly! <laughs> um, you can, you can just take off, that's okay. If you hate me eating beans, if my eating beans is an offense to you... <laughs> You can just take off, that's okay. <laughs> you feel the stink bug? <laughs> okay. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Chat, this guy's in here consuming beans. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go in there. It's just a dude eating beans all day. <laughs> Does drinking anything help with the taste of the bad beans? No, it doesn't. It makes it worse, but I keep thinking it'll help. <laughs> People are having fun? Not on my watch. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, some somebody's always got to try to dunk on someone else. I don't know who that was aimed at, me or chat, but... Uh, some people hate seeing people have fun. How dare there be fun? No fun allowed! <laughs> and by the way, boy, at, by this point, I am a professional bean eater, okay? This is my fucking job. <laughs> Okay, chat. <laughs> Stream's done. Go back to being sad. No fun here. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, let's see. <laughs> God damn it, soggy sheep stain. God damn it. Every time I read your fucking cursed comments, I also read your fucking cursed name. <laughs> The one-two punch every time I read the fucking goddamn shit. <laughs> okay, let's go. Come on, let's get another good. Let's get another good bean. <laughs> it's gonna be a good fucking launch, Jet. It's gonna be a good goddamn launch! Fuck yes! <laughs> oh! Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Toasty, vanilla y, just a delicious goddamn bean. Woo! And I apologize. <laughs> I apologize for the bad beans earlier. That was obviously a misread by the beans. It was always gonna be. Uh, if you stick money in my mouth and twist my nipples, 
I wouldn't be surprised to see jelly beans come out. I mean, that the more beans I eat, the truer that statement gets. Oh, I hadn't noticed before, but you have had at least one of every flavor bean now. Um, I have. There's only there's only like whatever a dozen. Oh, wow. There's actually one, two, three, four, five. There's actually 20 different flavors and I've eaten all 20. All right. All right, it was another delicious good bean. The launch is saved. We're gonna have a good goddamn day. And that did kind of help with the awful tastes in my mouth. Okay. There we go, we got it. Bing, bang, boom. The beans are done, holy fuck. An hour in and we're finally fucking done the beans. And maybe now we can actually talk about Diablo 4 a little bit. Bing, bang, beans. All right. It is time, chat. You've had 25 boogers, 21 dead fish, 24 dirty dish water, 16 dog food, 10 Carolina Reapers, and less than 10 of every other flavor. Whoa, really? I've had 25 boogers and 21 dead fish and 24 dirty dish water and less than 10 of all the good ones? <laughs> wow. Um, okay, so. Uh, chat, last night, I went and uh, I, I, um... I went and I watched like hours and hours and hours of Diablo lore. And um, one thing I kind of uh, came up with was eventually after watching like four hours of Diablo lore, uh, it started to kind of get into the repetitive category. And I don't, I don't want to bore you guys with Diablo lore. I stayed a while and listened, exactly. So... I'm gonna kind of curate what we watch at first. And, uh, and then if we want, we can watch all the other stuff too. But we want to, we want to, uh, we want to at least just start with some fun, interesting stuff. <clears throat> I think the first thing that could be good to start with is Diablo published their official pre Diablo 4 new canon lore so why don't we start with that this is like the real stuff this is what blizzard has officially whoa blizzard has officially said is the lore leading to diablo 4 they have cannons okay that's yep they have cannons whoops 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 so let's watch Let's watch that. So let's go down to here. And good God, Baloney Joey. Holy fuck. Are you just going to read out of the actual Bible? Yes. That's exactly it. Uh, okay, so this then goes to this. Okay, so here's my thought is we will start with one video. We're just going to watch one video chat and uh, then we'll chit chat about it. Have a little bit of fun chat, um, but, but we'll just watch the one video. This is the first official Diablo lore video, okay? What about uh, lo-fi beats to stay a while and listen to? That's what I just had going to. All right. Here's the first video chat. This is the first bit of lore you need to know to get into Diablo Far. Four. Far four. You traveled a long way to be disappointed, young scholar. Life has taught me well that evil is inevitable and can never be truly destroyed. It can be banished. It can be thwarted. It can be driven back. But only for a time. Men are weak. Evil is seductive. 
Those who would do effect. nothing in the face of malevolence are cowards. You seek a weapon against the darkness rising in Sanctuary. The only thing I can arm you with is knowledge. So when evil finds a foothold and flourishes once again, at least I can say it was not due to ignorance. For untold eons, an eternal conflict has raged between the demonic hordes of the burning hells and the angelic host of the high heavens. Scholars have spilled gallons of ink and spent their eyesight in dim scriptoriums, writing and debating how these two factions began and what came before them, before us. It is said the first being, Anu, was the sum of all things, good and evil, light and dark, physical and mystical, joy and sadness, the one. Anu wished to be free from the malignance of evil, and so separated and expelled the darkness within. But what is cast off does not simply disappear, and that darkness found its shape in the seven-headed dragon, Tathamat, the prime evil who fought ceaselessly with Anu to their mutual destruction. It is said, when the remains of these two titans settled, the universe as we know it came into existence. All the realms of the high heavens, the burning hells, and pandemonium. Tathamet's blackened husk gave birth to the burning hells, and each of the seven heads transformed into the seven great evils each with dominion over their own realm. The three most dominant of these inherited the title of Prime Evil, feeding off one another to maintain dominion and rule over the legions of the Burning Hells. There was Mephisto, Lord of Hatred, Intelligent and Cunning, Father of Lucian and Lilith, the Mother of Sanctuary. Baal, Lord of Destruction, Corrupter of the World Stone and Diablo, Lord of Terror. As Deckard Cain once wrote, for as long as man fears the dark, Diablo will remain the most insidious and, I would argue, the most powerful of all the evils. The four lesser evils, no less dangerous to the people of Sanctuary, are not to be discounted on the basis of their title. Underestimating their capabilities and intentions is a sure path to our destruction. Belial, Lord of Lies, uses poisonous untruths to create an ever darker, fractious world. Juriel, Lord of Pain, revels in the cacophonous screams of those in physical agony. Even demons are no stranger to his torment. And Dariel, Don't look at the, the boobas. Of anguish, Stop it. Is the TOS. counterpart of Juriel. Whereas he delights in bodily torment, and Dariel derives pleasure from anguish of the mind and soul. Asmadan, the Lord of Sin, a clever manipulator and master of temptation. Don't look at his boobas either. In all its forms, but revels most in the failures of others. Demonic hordes spawn from the vile cavities of the burning hells, a host of ravenous, furious monstrosities that reflected the poisonous elements of the progenitor. There are demons beyond counting in the Burning Hells. At the center of the High Heavens lies the Crystal Arch, said to be formed of Anu's spine. When it vibrates in perfect harmony, an angel is created, embodying an aspect of what Anu had once been. The purest of these become archangels, and five rose above the rest to lead the host of the High Heavens. Imperius, Archangel of Valor, a brilliant tactician who commanded the warriors of heaven and led them into battle with hell, but whose pride has led to much destruction. Tyriel, former Archangel of Justice, who abandoned his rigid dedication to justice and took up the aspect of wisdom instead. He supported the many causes of humanity, renounced his angelic nature and fell to earth as a mortal. Sanctuary would have fallen to darkness long ago without his aid. Inarius, creator of Sanctuary, served under Tyriel and was an advisor to the Council. 
until he rebelled. Oriel, the Archangel of Hope, who embodies the shining light of a bright future and sees the potential for good in all things, but who is no less a warrior than the others, dispatching those who spread despair and darkness. She is said to lead the chorus of the high heavens in harmony. Ethereal, the Archangel of Fate, who comprehends the tangled web of fate and time, though the future of humanity remains obscure to him. Ralph Innocent is the narrator. Because we are not of the natural order of creation. Maltheo, the former Archangel of Wisdom, who fell to darkness and brought ruin to Sanctuary when he abandoned the aspect of wisdom and took up the aspect of death. I encountered him once long ago and barely escaped with my life. Few who met him after his transformation survived. After all, no one can stop death. These five archangels formed the Angiris Council and ruled heaven in harmony until Malthael abandoned heaven. The council fell to confusion and dissension. Their unity diminished. Alongside heaven and hell, there is a third realm. And this is where our next story begins and ends. Where Anu and Tathamed slew one another, the violence scarred the cosmos and birthed the plain of Pandemonium. It was here the World Stone, also called the Eye of Anu, came to rest. A mountain-sized artifact of infinite power that embodied the endless cycles of birth and death, destruction and creation. Desire to control its infinite power fueled the eternal conflict until Inarius and Lilith stole it and used it to create sanctuary. The hour grows late, the fire is dying and the cold is unrelenting. Come back if you're still alive and I'll tell you the tale of our creation. Of our creators, Lilith and Inarius, mother and father of sanctuary and the long, bloody history of the eternal conflict. For now, we should rest. And I pray your dreams are not as dark as mine. Okay, there we go. Yeah, the ads are, uh, the ads are rolling. So that's great, we just finished the video. Uh, okay, there we go. So that is the first uh, of the lore videos, the official lore videos for the kind of background uh background info of diablo and i got i got a couple little a couple a couple a couple issues with it <laughs> one of which we'll get into later <laughs> but yeah so that that the guy narrating is uh lorath you have issues with the lore i do but oh and you know what actually um can you link the videos we watched it yes i've got them all listed in my own private discord channel i'll uh, i'll put them out in the in the diablo channel absolutely can you summarize for us yeah so this is interesting you know it, it, i wasn't paying attention so if you missed it let me give you like a, a 30 to 40 second synopsis in case you got lost in all the lore and all the names and everything basically um oh hello techsmith it's me lorath you know, I asked the Barbarian why he carries around so many potions. He said, in case I get a little whirlwinded out there. <sighs> and did you hear about the neck beeper who threw a party? It was quite dead until someone told him to raise the spirits. Wow, really? The neck beeper? <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna try to <laughs> try to make a necromancer. <laughs> <laughs> Name him Neck Beeper. <laughs> um, ADHD wouldn't let me listen and remember all that info. Yeah, exactly. So let me sum it up for you. Originally, there was one being, right? And it was everything. And it didn't like being evil, so it split itself into two, good and evil. And basically, that created heaven and hell. That's basically what it is. Then there's lots of good guys and lots of bad guys. But basically, at one time, there was one being... And it didn't like having evil, so it split itself in half. And the two halves created heaven and hell. 
Easy as that. Is this fiction? Uh, this is this is uh, actually real life. This is the real history of the real world. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, this is this is basically just the the very very start of the whole thing. This is Genesis. This is Genesis. Exactly, hundred percent real. Yeah. The the big takeaway is. Um, that uh yeah you know there was uh well you guys can't see my little mouse that's okay yeah the original being was called anu and it made itself into anu which is only good and tathomet which was all evil and that's how we got heaven and hell um and then yeah they gave a bunch of names to a bunch of uh uh demons and stuff like that much of it is loosely based on Babylonian and Sumerian mythology. Yeah, which is the same as uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, actually. That one is also largely based. Uh, you know what? Most old school uh, 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 lore stuff is based on Sumerian and um, uh, Babylonian lore, which is interesting. But yeah, so this was just a long way of saying at one way long time ago, there was uh, there was one being that split itself into two and we got heaven and hell from that. It's uh, and then they go into the details about all the all the specifics. But really, I feel like the specifics of all the individuals um, is is more for the people who played the games. Like the fact that Duriel <laughs> is called the Lord of Pain um is very interesting because in Diablo 2 in Diablo 2 you're supposed to like go find uh Tal Rasha yeah he was a pain in act 2 exactly you you're supposed to go find Tal Rasha and as soon as you go into this room you're locked in there with no way to escape Duriel charges at you at a million miles an hour and basically just goes <laughs> and fucking kills you instantly. And then you need to pick up your body <laughs> before you can fight him again, but he's standing on top of your body. So he's just like, yeah, come on, come in here. Yeah, come get your... <laughs> <laughs> Duriel's fast, he has a frost aura which slows you down. Yeah, Duriel... <laughs> The most accurate retelling ever. You know the people that played fucking Diablo 2 and walked into that goddamn tomb only have only to have Duriel pound you into a goddamn fucking pink paste. <laughs> Fuck Duriel, yeah. So I love that he's the Lord of Pain because he was absolutely pain. <laughs> so I like that. Um... The uh, thawing potions, thawing potions were nice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, having your mercenary stacked up with all the most defensive stuff ever so that they could take a couple of hits for you. <laughs> so yeah, I, uh, Duriel, I like that he's called the, uh, the, the Lord of Pain. Um, uh, any other interesting ones in here? Lucian is interesting. I have never heard of Lucian. Does anyone know who, who and what the fuck Lucian is in this lore? The son of Mephisto? I've never heard of the son of Mephisto. What the fuck? No clue? Yeah. Who the fuck is that? He's connected to Lilith. Oh, thanks, Metal. <laughs> I have a feeling we'll meet Lucian. Yeah, so this is... This is my thought. I think they just snuck Lucian into this tree so that we'd have like someone to like they'd have oh yeah don't worry it's established lore and then when we meet him they're like yeah see i told you what if he's the wolf that would be fucking crazy korig that's fucking crazy <gasps> you whoa what if lucian's the fucking wolf very interesting Lucian's from the Diablo novels? Oh, I never read the novels. That would make sense, yeah. Maybe he was the dude that summons Lilith in the by three they come trailer? Oh, maybe, well, yeah, maybe. So if you don't know who Lilith is, Lilith is the daughter of Mephisto and uh, her and Inarius made sanctuary. That'll be the next video that we watch. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I thought it was interesting to have Lucian there because I've never heard of him. Uh, the other thing is uh, the world stone. 
So they mentioned the world stone in here. They call it the Eye of Anu. And they're like, it's a mountain-sized stone with infinite power. Um, and uh, the thing is, is I feel like people would have made a bigger deal about the world stone <laughs> in the earlier games if that was true. <laughs> <laughs> Mount Ariat Tech. Yeah, but it's like you would think people would have done more with it. And also, listen, okay, okay, listen. This is for the this is for the o Omega Diablo nerds. It was hidden, wasn't it? Okay, so tell me how a stone of infinite power uses its infinite power to hide itself and everybody finds it accidentally how does just everybody know about sanctuary and the world stone and everything accidentally game logic i know right i wish they would tied that up with a neater bow i just wish that had just been just a little a little bit trimmed and packaged they googled it <laughs> twitter <laughs> Cause it's a stone, not uh, cause it's just a stone, not a brilliant mind. Well, I just, I, I wish a little bit they had fleshed that lore out just a little bit. Likes to play peekaboo. <laughs> Don't judge the rock. Ah, okay. <laughs> I think it was like hidden, but some people still had the knowledge. So it was found out kind of shit, but you know, who knows? I know, right? Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> I thought that was, uh, I thought that was a, a, a an interesting little one. Tyrael had loose lips. <laughs> Tyrael, like, Tyrael's like, listen, I'm not supposed. Tyrael has a couple drinks. Says, guys, listen, I know, listen, I'm not supposed to talk about this, but I helped move. I helped move the world stone. <laughs> you should have fucking seen it, man. I put it inside a big mountain. Oh, don't tell anybody I said that. <laughs> So did this game come out chronologically before Diablo 2 because we killed Diablo in Diablo 2? Okay, Coraline, excellent fucking question. Thank you so much for that. these great questions. So here's the thing about Diablo, and listen, the lore gets a little wibbly wobbly, okay? So stick with me with this. Um, first things first, you can't kill, you can't destroy evil. So Diablo is like an essence of evil and uh, basically they trapped him inside a soul stone and whoever they put that soul stone into becomes Diablo, basically. So, uh, you know, this person put the soul stone in him, they became Diablo, that person got killed, they took the soul stone and put it in their head and they became Diablo and then they got killed and then the uh, spirit got infused into a person and they became Diablo and they got killed so uh is that why diablo had tits in d3 yes because it was a female body host um in diablo 3 so diablo got some honker bonker boobas in diablo 3. diablo wanted boobs exactly yeah <laughs> um is the soul stone a suppository well, most people seem to think it's supposed to be uh, inserted directly into the head and or heart. Um, am I mathing wrong? The early release for uh, date for Diablo is June 2nd, but the countdown on their website shows it being released today. Uh, Khaleesi time zones. It releases tomorrow in a time zone, and so they backpedaled it to whenever. What would Diablo milk taste like? Shiracha. Um, so is Diablo the only one who can be resurrected like that or no? Because I remember uh, in the Lilith trailer, she is birthed. Okay, so technically all seven evils can be reborn. They can all be brought back. Um, their souls are like essences and you can trap them inside of soul stones to prevent them from manifesting. But other than that, uh, you can't destroy them. Uh, and so, yeah, all the evils can come back. And actually in Diablo 3, that becomes a big deal. Lilith was not uh, killed or trapped in a soul stone. Lilith was actually banished to the void. And that big ritual was to summon her from the void, which is a very different place. In D3, Diablo is pretty much uh, Tathomet again at the end. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 
Uh, can you not just put the soul stone in a person, like just hide it? Uh, Little Pink Pony, interestingly enough, in Diablo 2, that's exactly what they did. They put Bale's soul stone inside of Tal Rasha, the most powerful mage basically ever. And his goal was to hold Bale inside the stone and inside himself. And uh, it probably would have worked if it hadn't been for poor little old Marius. Didn't know what he was doing. Kind of fucked up and ruined everything for everyone. Is the Void like the Supermax prison for bad people in Diablo? Like the most powerful place you can go to? You know, we don't have a lot of information about the Void. I feel like Blizzard has deliberately not been telling us a lot about the Void. Just so that it can kind of be like a little bit of like a uh, the void kind of uh, tool. We don't know a lot about it yet. At least maybe they talked about it in the novels, but in uh, video game lore, we don't have a lot for it. Was it the angels that are putting the evils in soul stones? Uh, yeah, well, one angel made the soul stones and then they had a group of really powerful humans hunt down evil and put them inside the soul stones. As someone who's completely new to the genre, do you think Diablo 4 could be a good opener, or do you recommend playing the earlier games first? Uh, ben Affleck, I would say, watch these videos with us and jump into Diablo 4. You don't need the old games. And listen, they basically, every time a new Diablo game comes out, they kind of fudge the, the lore on the earlier game. So like Diablo 2 came out and they're like, eh, that's what Diablo 1 actually was. Then Diablo 3 came out and they're like, yeah, that's, you know, that's kind of what all the old lore was. Diablo 4 comes with like, ah, ah, you know, that's, that's the lore now. <laughs> Are the other games worth playing? Uh, Diablo 2 for fun? Yes. Diablo 3 for story? Yes. Diablo 1? You can probably miss that one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that you need Diablo 1. I, yeah, listen, I got to be totally honest. I never find, I never fully beat Diablo 1. <laughs> listen, it's not that, it's, it's not that great of a game. <laughs> It's not that great of a, it's, it's kind of painful to play through. Okay. <laughs> Diablo wants the best. Oh, I don't know, man. It's a little tough. It's a little, the movement speed is so low. The attacking is so janky. Oh, <laughs> I know. I know. Can confirm a rough game to play through nowadays, but it was a treasure. I know it's just Diablo 2 was so fucking good. Diablo 2 was so good. You can learn so much about the game about from playing Diablo 2. I mean, like Diablo 2 was like fundamental bedrock. So lore wise, how powerful are witch doctors? Cause witch doctor was my favorite class. Uh, so here's an interesting thing about witch doctors. Witch doctors seem to have a different religion or a different belief about how the universe works, but also they seem to not be wrong. So I wanna know how the witch doctors religion factors in because Everybody else is like, oh, yeah, the Church of Light. Oh, the burning hells. Oh, you know, they, that's the only thing that exists. And witch doctors talk about a bunch of shit that no one else talks about. And I'm like, okay, so where is their stuff? Depends on your insurance. Ah, that makes sense. I got it. I got it. Okay. Um, Witch doctors tap into the same source as the priests of Rathma. Really? What's that from? I haven't finished Diablo 3, just bought it, but I also prepared to Diablo 4. Should I finish 3 before starting 4? I may not be able to control myself. Uh, Hala, you know, if you watch these videos with us, you don't need to beat it. Um, but it's actually a pretty fun playthrough, so I would recommend playing through it at some point. It's a good, fun game but we'll cover all the lore you need to know with these videos. 
Witch doctors are more on the spirit side, but my understanding is they tap into the same base source. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Can we watch the class cinematics before we play today? Uh, you mean from uh, the Diablo 3 uh, class cinematics? I have a video that goes over every intro cinematic for the classes of Diablo 3. Mr. Great Stream Title Opportunity should say stay a while and listen. Oh, fuck. All right, I'm changing it. I'm changing it right now. I'm changing it. Boom, got it. Whoa, that's a tear gosh dang too. Polly, Polly, it is D4 day. It is Diablo 4 day. I'm so fucking excited. I'm so fucking ready. Gosh dang, I'm so fucking excited. Uh, was watching someone play Diablo 3 last night, and I have to admit, I wasn't a big fan of the game style. It seemed cartoony. Uh, you know, Soggy, a lot of people had problems with Diablo 3. They thought it was too colorful, too cartoony, too this, too that kind of thing. Um, Diablo made a bit of fun of it. They have like a big rainbow zone where it's extremely colorful and over the top and everything. I didn't mind it, but some people really, really hated it. I liked Diablo 3 style, but I know some people didn't like it. My 5,000 plus hours of Diablo are so ready for this. Yes, Polly, me fucking too. I'm so fucking ready. Diablo 3 was so good in my opinion. I love D3. I love D3. I had a really, I mean, yeah, I've got thousands of hours in the game. I was a huge fan of Diablo 3. Lore wise, what do you think the most powerful class is in Diablo 4? Would you say it's the Necromancer? The most powerful class in Diablo 4. In Diablo 3, the most powerful class was obviously the Sorcerer. Here's a little uh, here's a little hint on the lore of Diablo 3, Sorcerer. Get this. A long time ago, there were books written of prophecy that would say Diablo comes back and so and so kills him and Diablo comes back and so and so kills him and Diablo comes back and so and so kills him the sorcerer went and read the book and their name was in it it's like blah 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 and then Techsmith the sorcerer kills Diablo so the sorcerer literally knew their fate was to kill Diablo and the whole time you're playing the sorcerer they're like casually going through the game. They're like, you literally can't kill me. I read the prophecy. I know I killed Diablo in the end. <laughs> what an ego boost that would have been. You should hear the fucking sorcerer in Diablo 3. He is the most egotistical, abs literal plot armor. Yeah. Literal. The guy is literally like, I have plot armor. What the fuck chance do you think you have? I read the book. I already know how this one ends. I live and then I killed Diablo. <laughs> so uh, in Diablo three, the sorcerer was the most uh, was the most powerful because they had plot armor. In Diablo four, probably barbarian. Leave the love demon hunter two in D three. Yeah, that was my favorite. Demon hunter was my number one in D three. <laughs> sorcerer dies. Wait, I'm not supposed to die. Uh, okay, so that's the first video. To recap the uh, to recap the first video again, originally there was one being. It was called Anu. It split itself into two to get rid of the evil. Anu remained and the evil became Tothamet. And eventually that led to heaven and hell. That's the summary of this video. Is Witch Doctor in D4? No, True Pigeon King. Sadly, it is not. Um, okay, so. Let's grab the next video. Let's grab that next video. That was number one. Let's do number two. Who's pinging me? Who's pinging me? Debbie? Pinging me during stream? How dare you? 
How dare you? How darest thou? Uh, okay. Here is the second, uh, here is the second video chat. Uh, do you have clan plans? I'm going to be running one. Yes, Polly, I'm going to run one too. Uh, it is going to be called Bod Gang. Did we decide out a main? Yes, Rogue. Definitely Rogue. Uh, I'm going Rogue. I'll be making a community called Bod Gang, and it's going to be great. Uh, here's the second video chat. Remember, all we learned was Anu was the original being. It split in half, made heaven and hell. Okay? Uh, Lilith is uh, one of hell, and Inarius is one of heaven. Here we go. Second video. Let's go. You've returned. And with Ail this time. That deep rumbly voice. choice for this dark story. Oh yeah, tell me, Ralph. The shadows will seem longer when it's done. Oh yeah. Before we talked of Anu and Tathamet, the high heavens and the burning hells, and all who reside there, embroiled in the eternal conflict. Now let us speak of the creation of Sanctuary, and our creators, Inarius and Lilith, Angel and Demon, our father and mother. Mommy! The eternal conflict raged on, endless and all-consuming. Led by the Angiris Council, the angelic forces fought countless battles against the armies of the seven demon lords who sought to conquer all of creation. Though the high heavens often defeated their adversaries, they also failed to destroy them, allowing evil to return again and again and again, ceaseless, unrelenting. Both sides claimed victories, both suffered crippling defeats. The conflict was a never-ending slaughter. Many of these battles were fought in Pandemonium, the plane set to be formed from the violent death of Anu and Tathamet, where the heart of creation lay, the mountain-sized artifact that would come to be known as the World Stone, housed within the Pandemonium Fortress. Any who control the World Stone would have the power to create new worlds or unmake them with a thought. Okay. A desirable and... Okay, hold on. I gotta pause. I gotta, I gotta pause. Sounds like Andy Circus with the bass turned all the way up. It's Ralph Innocent. Ralph Innocent with that big, deep, bassy voice. Um, okay, I gotta pause for a sec, okay? They just said that the World Stone has the power to create or destroy entire worlds with a single thought. Who the fuck decided to do what they do with it and not just like destroy the enemy? Anyways, I feel like they just said infinite power can unmake reality and uh, that I feel like there's a lot of easier solutions than this. Anyways. Dangerous prize indeed. It became the focus of the eternal conflict. Over the eons, the Pandemonium Fortress changed hands many times. It became a strange place, embodying the warped reality of Pandemonium as a whole. A structural and liminal place, affected by the high heavens and burning hells alike. Angels and demons too numerous to count have fallen at its gates, over and over and over again. This endless cycle caused Inarius, advisor to the Angiris Council, and under Tyriel's command, to eventually conclude that the war could never be won, and he resolved to abandon it. Elsewhere, Lilith, daughter of hatred, was arriving at a similar conclusion. On her father Mephisto's role in the eternal conflict, Lilith once wrote, My father is content to fight the same battles and the same foes while everything turns to ashes. The war will never be won Mommy? so long as he and his brothers lead. There is an end to it. But fools like my father are too blind to see it. Inarius and Lilith. Angel and demon. Separated by a vastness in distance and experience that is difficult to comprehend, they came to the same conclusion. They must escape the eternal conflict. I wonder if the cosmos had ever contemplated such an unholy alliance. Are we on her side? Me. I am. 
I wonder if creation shuddered in horror and awe, as Inarius and Lilith gathered others to their cause, fellow renegades seeking escape from the ceaseless fighting. The details of their meeting, like so much of our history, is obscured by the relentless passage of time and myth. But the great Haradric scholar Deckard Cain tells us of Inarius, wounded or marooned in the Pandemonium Fortress, meeting with Lilith. <coughs> Lilith was not spared the hatred of her father Mephisto, and from time immemorial had awaited an opportunity to rebel. For the first time, combatants in the eternal conflict not only set aside their differences, but also formed a union. It's difficult to imagine, but legends tell us that Inarius and Lilith forged an alliance that would alter the course of the war, reality itself, and all of existence. <laughs> Inarius and Lilith pledged themselves to their joint cause of escaping the eternal conflict. United in purpose, both resourceful and wise in their way, they managed to gain control of the World Stone and hide it from the watchful eyes of the heavens and the hells. Working together, they shifted the World Stone into a pocket dimension, hiding it from the opposing powers of the eternal conflict. There, they used its extraordinary power to shape a new world, a refuge free from war, free from unending strife, a sanctuary. The renegade angels and demons came together to create new life, and the nature of the eternal conflict changed. The joining of the opposing natures within these firstborn made beings unlike any before. Beautiful abominations, called Nephilim, from which humanity would one day descend as inheritors of both lineages. The birthrights of the firstborn graced them with the potential to resist the evil of the burning hells and to defy the dominion of the high heavens. Because of this, many of the angels and demons who rebelled with Lilith and Inarius feared what these children might become. The burden of children can strain even the strongest of allies, and it seems that angels and demons are not immune to this simple truth. I love the art. Surely, Inarius and Lilith could not have foreseen the cosmic consequences of their actions. Inarius was alarmed when he realized that his children might surpass both angels and demons in potential. The other angels and demons fought fiercely over what should be done, whether to spare the Nephilim or exterminate them. The descent between the two groups alarmed Inarius, who called for a period of reflection. Lilith, driven into a mad frenzy by the threat of her children's extinction, ruthlessly murdered each and every renegade angel and demon, leaving only Inarius to discover the carnage she had wrought. Horrified by the loss of his comrades at Lilith's hand, Inarius became enraged. But still, he could not kill Lilith. Instead, he banished her from the sanctuary they had created together. Inarius then attuned the World Stone to diminish the powers of the Nephilim over time, and disappeared in the aftermath. As their strengths faded generation by generation, they came to resemble mortals, no longer angelic or demonic, simply human. Gross! As their power diminished, so too did their collective memory, until only legends of what came before remained. It is said that the firstborn remained immortal and undying as humankind took shape. You normies! Giving rise to the cultures, <laughs> the kingdoms, and tribes of sanctuary, before themselves fading into myth. Now you know, the birth of our world and our inheritance, demonic and divine, the eternal conflict that rages ceaselessly in each of us. Think on that, young scholar, until we meet again. None of us is above sin or immune to evil seduction. Even the most righteous may fall, given the right push in the wrong direction. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's, uh... That's a good, that's a good, that's a good scene. I like that. That's a good one.
and i didn't retain any of that i know so this is we're gonna we're gonna recap them after we watch these videos um because as super cool as it is to have Lorath kind of read and narrate and tell you all about the grand histories of Sanctuary and our mother Lilith, um, uh, it can be a lot to take. It's so narrative that it can be sometimes a little bit hard to retain it all. So basically, you know, we have heaven and hell, angels and demons. Um... And uh, Lilith the demon and Inarius the angel got together, made a whole bunch of babies. Turns out the babies were super potentially powerful, like the strongest beings in creation. Uh, and uh, this is where the stories kind of, there's a couple different stories about what happened. And I guess the story we're sticking with is that uh, other people got very scared of what these babies could do because they were so powerful and they're like hmm, maybe we should kill the babies and lilith is like not my babies motherfucker so lilith killed everyone to protect her babies and inarius is like whoa <laughs> that's a that's a dramatic overreaction and inarius got uh, got rid of lilith sent her to the uh sent her to the void are we their babies? So we are, so basically, you know, Inarius and Lilith got together. Their babies are called Nephilim. The Nephilim made babies and made humans. So we are the children of Nephilim, who are the children of Inarius and Lilith. We're the descendants of them, yeah, exactly. So yeah, like literally, Lilith is our, is our, is our, is our grandmommy. We have a drop of Nephilim blood, exactly. Yeah, we got a, yeah, yeah, exactly. Lilith is our grandmommy, exactly. Um, was it an overreaction on Lilith's end? Because it kind of seems like a rational response to me. Kato Dragon, I fucking agree. Listen, I'm on, uh, just so you guys know, I'm on team Lilith the whole way. And I suspect, I think the Diablo 4 story is gonna have us joining Lilith. I think Lilith is gonna be like, be beautiful and sin, my children. And I think we're gonna join her. How dare you hurt her babies? I know, that's just it. I think we're gonna join Lilith. I think we're gonna realize that Lilith seems scary because she's a demon, but actually all Lilith wants is for us to be super powerful. And then she also wants us to call, kill all of hell and heaven. Now, I do see potentially a small breakdown. A small breakdown when we have to go kill all the angels. <laughs> I could see us maybe having a problem with that and maybe we'll end up fighting Lilith when Lilith is like, yes, kill everyone. And we're like, everyone? And she's like, yes, everyone. Let her cook. I'm ready to let her cook. I want to see what Lilith's got planned. I think we're going to join Lilith. I'm fucking excited to join Lilith. I think that's the way we're going to go. I'll be, I hope we don't have to kill Lilith. Here's my here's my projection for the future story of this game, okay? Here's my projection, and this is not a spoiler because I know nothing. This is purely, purely speculation on my end. Lilith shows up, we're all like, oh, scary demon. And then we find out, oh, Lilith is on our side. So we join Lilith. And Lilith has us kill all the demons. And we're like, yeah, Lilith is awesome. And then Lilith has us kill all the angels. And we're like, oh, that's that's not that's not as cool. And then Lilith has us kill, I don't know, the void or something. And we're like, uh oh, I think Lilith's out of control. And then we have to kill Lilith like a year or two from now to stop her from killing the universe. So I could see us eventually having to fight Lilith once she goes a little bit murder happy. But I think we're going to join her first. There's a point in all stories where the bad guy's rationale reasoning is actually better than the good guys. You know, I actually tried to do that in Mar. No spoilers, but I did try to have that kind of factor into my D&D &D campaign. Well, Tyrael is mortal. That's true. Also, I don't know how they did that. What do you mean he's mortal? He can't be human. Look at Lilith compared to Inarius. So she's the Giga Chad. He's the soy boy. It's weird how they portray Inarius here because Inarius is quite the big daddy in Diablo 4. 
Well, now I will watch Mar episode two. <laughs> Six hours. Yeah, full metal. We got the we got the timer right here. <laughs> you were right, Dex, with lots of spoilers. Damn, next year all spoiled. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's what all it really means, right, Yendar? It's just that he ha he doesn't have immortality, which makes him mortal. But he's like, what species is he? He's just a mortal angel? If D3 is any factor, uh, we see how the angels turn their back on humans, so I think they have it coming. I agree, Gangle. I super agree. I think the angels have it coming, man. Especially fucking... Um, uh, what's his name? Angel of Valor. Imperius. Imperius is just a fucking ass. I've not seen a lick of D4 gameplay, so you'll be breaking my D4 cherry. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Yeah, Imperius, yeah. Uh, I've actually got so... Uh, a little while ago, they made a little six or seven minute, like, Diablo anime cartoon. And we're going to watch that later, too. And it gives us a little insight into Imperius being kind of a bad guy. Uh, I think um, I could see I could see Imperius becoming a, a demon or either like uh, the 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 Lord of uh, Wrath or the Lord of Anger or perhaps be the aspect of Wrath, the angel aspect of Wrath. Think what happened with Tyrion leaving the heavens. It was like him literally leaving his angel spirit. Ah, I could see that. Pride? Maybe pride. So, yeah, you know, I think the angels have it coming. I think the angels are in for a real bad time. I could see Lilith wanting to, uh, to fuck them all up for sure. I would love if they leaned into the whole angels have pushed their holier-than-thou fuckery a bit too much this time. Well, I mean, and this is the thing... Like, the old rules said that angels could not interact with humans at all. No interaction. Tyrael broke every fucking sacred law. He broke every order of reality by interfering with humans. The fact that the angels yelled at Tyrael is like, because Tyrael broke all the fucking rules. Now, he's looking out for us, so we're like, hey, thanks for breaking the rules, bud. Not really, that's why he felt... Well, that's just... Yeah, he broke all the rules, um, was was uh, yelled at, and so he sacrificed his... Uh, he sacrificed his immortality and fell from heaven. Tyrion was like, nah, fuck that. I'm gonna do me. That's literally... That's literally what he was like, Lexi. He's like, nah, fuck you guys, man. <laughs> he's the angel of justice, so why would they think that he's... Uh, what he's saying isn't right, you know? Well, you know, sometimes what's right is not what's just in terms of the angels, right? The angels say, these are the rules. They are unjust rules, but they are the rules. Tyrael says, they're unjust. As the aspect of justice, I can't be okay with this. So like he was at a mutual exclusion with justice and the rules. Material was the embodiment of justice and uh, he knew what was going on wasn't cool. Exactly, yeah. It's one of the most awesome scenes in Diablo 3. How dare you judge me? I am the embodiment of justice. Exactly. You cannot judge me. I am justice itself. I fucking love that. We're going to watch that a little later too. We're going to watch a bunch of cinematics. We're going to watch a bunch of cool shit. You guys are going to become Diablo pros by the time Diablo 4 comes out. Sometimes justice is bloody. Yeah, absolutely. Material shedding his wings is the best fucking cutscene. It's so fucking good. The effect, the effects, and the sounds, and the music, and everything. It's just like, I fucking love it. It's so good. <laughs> I didn't know that Diablo had such deep lore. Well, to be fair, I think as the games come out, they make the lore deeper and deeper. And it comes at the cost of some wibbly wobbly bullshit but i love the lore i don't know if you guys can tell i fucking love the diablo lore blizzard always fucking kills with the animated stuff yeah i agree sir Condi. their animated scenes are fucking incredible 
I missed like 30 minutes. Will that stuff be on the test? Uh, yes, SOC, it will be. And if you get it wrong, you're not allowed to play Diablo 4. <laughs> Real lore whore, which is funny because like, uh, as you guys know, when I play video games, I'm like, I am the embodiment of blah, 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 lore, 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 blah, blah, blah. Uh, but when it comes to Diablo and, uh, and old school WoW lore, I fucking love that shit. I love it so much. So these are one of the few exceptions and Elden Ring. There's a couple exceptions to my, to my distaste of lore. I am fate someone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blizzard animations always slap while cinematics, Overwatch cinematics, Diablo cinematics. Yeah, absolutely. That's <laughs> so sweet. I played all FF14. Couldn't tell you the story to save my life, right, Viv? <laughs> fucking same. Fucking same. <laughs> Used to daydream about all old WoW lore all the time. Yeah, man. I wonder what a scale would uh, be kill Jaden against Diablo. Um, I think Diablo is an immortal essence of the original creator and kill Jaden is just like a big bad demon dude. Um, I feel like if Reddit lore elitists made a video game, you would have to play, you would have to pass a test on the lore of the previous game in order to play. Yeah, fucking true, Sir Cotty. <laughs> Diablo is a giant soap opera. Yes, it is, and I'm here for it. Give me that Diablo soap opera, man. <laughs> Tyrael's confrontation with Malthael's epic as well. That's true too. I did like that a lot. What's your stance on the whole Blizzard situation regarding harassment and bullying culture within the office and the CEO's persistent denial and gaslighting? Yeah, so uh, when that whole thing broke open and um, the employees were like, listen to us, listen, it's fucking bad. It's awful in here. And the uh, employees had their walkouts and their demonstrations and uh, lighting up Twitter and all that stuff. Um, you know, I stopped playing Blizzard games, I canceled all my subscriptions, uh, and, and I tried to elevate the voices of the employees saying, this shit's not okay, like, I am fucking absolutely flabbergasted and sickened and disgusted by the bullshit that's happened. Um, so, uh, yeah, the, I went through a period where I also, you know, boycotted Diablo, or uh, not, uh, boycotted, uh, Blizzard, um, in a lot of things, um... And uh, yeah, Bobby, I know Bobby Kotick is is a uh, is uh, a, a black stain upon the Blizzard uh, in, in whole fucking thing. Uh, I was glad to see that um, a lot of people got fired. A lot of the offenders got fired. All their references to in the video games got removed, uh, and they implemented some ways to improve the quality of life of employees. And the voice of the employees uh, indicates that there has been positive change. And uh, I started with listening to the employees. I'm going to continue listening to the employees. Then when the employees say things have improved, I'm going to listen to them. But that being said, I would still like to see continued change. I know Blizzard did the... Uh, mandatory minimum that they had to do to make things better and I'm glad that they did that but I would like to see continued efforts uh, the employees say that things are continuing to get better which makes me happy and uh, I will continue to listen to the employees and pray that Bobby loses his job I will I will I will fucking absolutely celebrate and dance the day that Bobby Kotick is no longer a part of Blizzard I think he drags the whole fucking thing down He's just a money guy, and uh, money guys make for bad uh, video game guys, so. Microsoft will throw him out. We can hope. We can fucking hope. Bobby will be given a golden parachute. I don't give a shit what his fucking parachute is. Uh, I just want him fucking gone. The employees also say that boycotts are not what they want. They want us to talk about all the bad things happening. So play the game and shit on the leadership long and loud. Exactly, exactly. Support the employees, talk about the issues, make it, make it known. Uh, 
Um, and so, yeah, I, I continue to support the employees. They don't want walkouts. They don't want boycotts. So I'm not doing walkouts. I'm not doing boycotts. But I will continue to say that the high up execs uh, at Blizzard, especially Bobby Kotick, are dragging the whole thing down. And the, the reason that the games are so fucking good are a testament to the incredible, incredible, fantastically talented people building the games. Uh, they have got some fucking absolutely excellent game designers, cinematographers, fucking graphics artists, story writers they are doing incredible fucking work they've got some of the best of the entire fucking industry wor working there and uh and i you know i fucking love that they're doing so good so that makes me very very happy but yes fuck the people at the top fuck the money guys ruining everything and way to fucking go for the employees continuing to make an excellent game despite the bullshit I will add, can we get better writers for the WoW team? Uh, listen, the most recent, the most recent WoW's been pretty good. <laughs> can you show us the Angel of Death? I think I missed that. I didn't know there was an Angel of Death in Diablo. Okay, Coraline. The Angel of Death is a bit of a weird story. Malthale was the aspect of wisdom. In his wisdom, he saw the only way to end the eternal conflict. And the only way to do that was to become the Angel of Death. It's it's a Diablo 3 storyline. Um, and it'll kind of come up a little bit later. We'll watch some cinematics that will come up, but it's 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 kind of a whole thing. Um, okay. So why don't we watch another video? So let's let's catch up with the first two videos we've seen. In case you've lost it, in case you just joined, or in case the videos were a little bit too much, here's the recap of the two videos. Originally, there was one being called Anu. It split itself into good and evil. The good became heaven. The evil became hell. Demons and angels. One of the demons, Lilith, and one of the angels, Inarius, went and made a secret little world and they had babies, and those babies were called Nephilim, and they were more powerful than demons and angels. Um, there was a bit of a kerfuffle. Uh, Lilith went a little crazy and got banished to the void, and Inarius suppressed Nephilim until they became humans. So human beings are the spawn, are the babies, are the children of Inarius and Lilith, a demon and, a, and an angel. That's basically catches you up to the last two videos. Oof, kerfuffles are worse than dust-ups. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Red 7, don't worry. Red 7, you can hang out and uh, and you'll get a lot of uh, lore for Diablo in the, in the next couple hours. But also, you can jump into Diablo 4 and you will not be confused. They'll explain everything to you. You'll be all good. Pick my D3 class. I'm going to play it today. Uh, uh, wizard. Coraline, play the wizard. It's the best storyline. <clears throat> uh, okay. So next video. Next video. So, hey, look at that right here. Uh, bup, bup, bup. All right, next video chat. This one's about the Lord of Terror. Sit back and let Lorath's deep, bassy voice tickle your eardrums. Another night, and you brought more ale. Stronger stuff this time. Essential for keeping warm here in the Fractured Peaks. Pour me a cup. Tonight is a long, sad tale of bravery and betrayal and the great blight of destruction that changed the very fabric of our world. When last we spoke, we spoke of Inarius and Lilith, and humankind's creation. How humanity found itself caught by the eternal conflict. A battle that does not belong to humankind, but one we must fight nonetheless. Two rival groups, the Temple of the Triune and the Cathedral of Light, sprang up on the world of Sanctuary and strove to win over the hearts of mankind. 
the Triune was secretly backed by the three prime evils, Mephisto, Baal, and Diablo, who had discovered Sanctuary's existence. Inarius secretly founded the Cathedral of Light in response, an attempt to counter their malevolent influence. Unbeknownst to either the prime evils or Inarius, Lilith returned to Sanctuary to reawaken her children's dormant powers, knowing they had the ability to banish the agents of the Burning Hells and Inarius for good. Soon after, Sanctuary was engulfed in what would become known as the Sin War, a catastrophic proxy war over the souls of humankind. Humanity won the war, but they faced another kind of battle. The High Heavens too became aware of Sanctuary and her blasphemous children, and now deliberated on humanity's ultimate fate. With the Angiris Council split, the Archangel Tyriel cast the final vote to spare us from extermination. Instead, the memory of all that came before was taken from humankind, including knowledge of their inherited power. In exchange for their part in leaving Sanctuary alone, the Burning Hells took Inarius into their custody, and it is said that he has suffered unending torment at their hands ever since. Of course, it is not the nature of the Burning Hells to leave well enough alone, and before long, more attempts to corrupt humankind were underway. The lesser evils, led by Asmodan and Belial, staged an uprising that upset the established order of the Burning Hells. Convinced the prime evils had abandoned the eternal conflict in favor of corrupting humanity, the usurpers set out to banish the three prime evils to Sanctuary. They lost fully one third of their army, but they succeeded in banishing Mephisto, Baal, and Diablo into the mortal realm in what would come to be known as the Dark Exile. They spent decades spreading terror, hatred, and destruction across the land. It is here that the story of the Haradrim begins. When Tyriel assembled a group of powerful mages and tasked them with humanity's defense, standing fast against the tyranny of the prime evils and guarding against the wrathful eyes of the heavens, falling upon humankind once again. Tyriel carved three soul stones from pieces of the world stone, crystalline prisons designed to contain the malignant essence of a prime evil. Sapphire for Mephisto, Amber for Baal, and Crimson for Diablo. Under Tyriel's guidance, the Haradrim searched across the vastness of Sanctuary for the Lords of Hell, with the aim to contain them. The Haradrim found Mephisto, and after much struggle imprisoned him. The Sapphire Soul Stone was given to the Zakarun for safekeeping. They also battled Baal, but in the process the Soul Stone intended for him was shattered. The Order's leader, Tal Rasha. Okay, I have an issue with this. This is one of the, it's so fucking small and it's so fucking petty. This is such a shitty little thing for me to get upset about, but I'm gonna get upset about it, okay? It, the soul stone wasn't broken in the fight, okay? Baal is the lord of destruction, okay? And when they put his soul into the crystal, his destructive power cracked it. It never broke. It was flawed and cracked due to him being the aspect of destruction, okay? Anyways, I'm done. Trapped Baal's essence in the largest shard of the amber soul stone but feared that was insufficient. The Haradrim concluded they could fuse the Shard to a human body in an effort to better contain Baal's power. Talrasha selflessly volunteered his own body to contain the Lord of Destruction's raging essence. Tyriel himself took up the solemn duty of driving the Shard into Talrasha's heart. The grieving Haradrim sealed away their noble leader within a subterranean tomb believing they were leaving him to suffer torment beyond imagination as he struggled to hold fast the monstrous Lord of Destruction for all of time. In the wake of this tragedy, Jared Kane took leadership of the bruised and battered mages. Together, the Haradrim spent nearly 10 years following Diablo's path of terror through Sanctuary until finally coming to blows and containing him within the Crimson Soul Stone. Diablo's soul stone was carefully hidden deep in a labyrinthian cave system by the Haradrim. To guard the great evil hidden in its depths, a Haradric monastery was built atop the caves. The hope, I believe, 
was that it would never be disturbed and that Diablo would be forgotten in the great below, his influence fading with time. But that was not to be. No prison can last forever. So long as a key exists, its door can be opened. The land near that small monastery would eventually be settled, and the quiet, prosperous town of Tristram was founded there. None could have known. Okay, so I see a couple questions about why is it not called a ruby and the stone being crimson is getting to me. So this is an in. So uh, you know what? The only reason that I can think of for them to call it that is because it's not actually a different gem, right? It's a shard of the world stone itself, and they're just describing its color, rather, and they don't want to liken it to the actual gems in the game. Like, uh, they don't, it's not an actual ruby, it's ruby colored, but I think if they called it ruby, people could get confused and think that it, it is a ruby, but it's actually just, it's actually just a shard of the world stone, and they're just describing its color. Which, also, by the way, they didn't have colors, okay? That's a new thing, and I don't know why they need the colors, okay? They're all just soul stones. They're just soul stones. They don't need to have a bunch of different fucking colors, okay? Actually... They're just pieces of the world stone. And they were all just, they were all just fucking uh, world stone shards. I like the colors though. I do like the colors. Um, but, uh, you know, just so you know, they call it crimson to say the color of the shard of world stone and to not confuse it with rubies, which are a whole different actual gem. Why choose Sapphire then? Yeah. Hey, Shay, don't ask too many questions. Okay. <laughs> Shay, shut up. <laughs> yeah. The whole fucking thing falls apart at about exactly there. <laughs> Maybe to dovetail in some end games socket gems. Maybe, maybe, who knows? <laughs> Anyways, okay. Here, listen to the lovely Tristram music as we get back into it. Also, uh, chat, um, it's about to get real, real lorry here in a sec. Oh shit, ads are starting. Pause. Let's pause for ads. This thing has become background noise. I'm hearing sounds, but no longer hearing words. Yeah, don't worry. That's okay, Ghoul again. The sounds are nice right the art is nice and um and uh you know i'll i'll uh, i'll make uh, I'll, I'll summarize and everything anyways it's nice to see the art and some people can follow it so i just want everybody to be as excited and, and have as much love for diablo as i have is there any place in diablo so far that we have yet to visit actually there are a number of places lord walrus there are, uh, there are a lot of places. Uh, the Charvel Wilds right here. I don't think we've ever been there. I don't think we've ever been to uh, the place where the monks come from. Oh, I meant uh, even uh, when you talk. Oh, thanks, Ghoul again. Well, hopefully, hopefully the background noise is pleasant. Uh, the Amazon Wilds, the Scavos Isle. Yep, yep, absolutely. Yeah, there's, there's lots of places we haven't been. Thank you for pausing for ads. Hey, no problem. Um, yeah, so, uh, well, yeah, so basically, uh, watch out. Because uh, it, it's about to get real lorry. There's going to be a lot of names, a lot of actions. This person went here, did this to this person, then this person found out this thing over here. It's going to get a little overwhelming, but don't worry about it too much. I'll recap it. Take what bits and pieces you can. Enjoy the pretty pictures and, and lovely gravelly voice. Your nerdgasm is highly infectious and I love it. I just, I just fucking love this game. I love this game. I love this story. <laughs> Can't wait to play Necromancer. Got my build already made with an online class builder. Fuck yes, Eldritch. Who's Lori? Hugh Lori? Wait, what? What are you talking about? Um, can we take a bean break soon? No, but actually, I'm gonna go take a pee. Chat, I'm gonna go pee pees while there's an ad going on. Uh, minute minute thirty left on the ads. Chat, go have a little pee pees. Um, <laughs> text with the art is nice, the music is nice, the lore is all wrong. Yeah, basically. Okay, pee break. Be right back, chat.
<clears throat> I'm back. I'm back. Uh. Whoa, my dad worked for Blizzard a while back, so the games have been a huge part of my life. But I was too young to ever get what was going on. It's super cool to get all this lore finally. Fuck yeah, Batcat. Frick yeah. No, Snadge, why are you peeing in the empty dryer? I miss the Amazon class from D2. She was the best and greatest of her people. Some may... Oh my god, Squall. Here I was, excited to uh, frickin' nerd out with you about Amazons, okay? And your fucking dad joked me. Also, by the way, I think we're probably gonna get Amazons again. I think they're coming back. We're gonna go to the Scovos Isles and get Amazons. Okay. The ads are done. <laughs> M plate, yes. Fucking <laughs> when he holds Leah's hand, yeah, absolutely. All right, ads are over. Let's get back into the lore. Um, except perhaps Diablo, the grim fate that would befall the unfortunate souls that called Tristram home. Love that. Music. Over time, foreign powers influenced the land, and Tristram became politically significant. At the behest of the Zacharum Church and guided by Archbishop Lazarus, a Zacharum lord named Leoric crowned himself King of Candorus and made Tristram his capital. He converted the old Heradric monastery into a seat of power, Here comes the lore. unaware of the threat that lurked beneath. Leoric was wise and just, ushering in an era of peace and prosperity for Tristram. But with time, his outlook darkened and he grew irrational. His mind slipping towards madness and paranoia. Ooh, actually, okay, Audrey has an excellent question. Whereabouts in the games with the lore are we right here? This is right before Diablo 1. This is this is basically the lore of Diablo 1. The king began ordering the execution of any who questioned him. People started calling him the Black King. He declared war on the neighboring kingdom of Westmart, in part thanks to Lazarus's counsel, an unjust and unwinnable war. Leoric's eldest son, Aiden, joined the fight, seeking approval from his father. Shortly after Aiden's departure, Leoric's youngest son, Albrecht, went missing. Leoric tortured and executed many of his own people in his frenzy to find his son. His knights, freshly returned from the war and appalled at the state of their kingdom, were forced to slay the Black King to stop the brutality. In an attempt to honor the man he had been, Leoric was given a proper burial in the old catacombs. Aiden too returned to find a kingdom in shambles. Rumors of the horrific happenings in Tristram spread, along with the news of the appearance of demonic creatures, and brought adventurers to Tristram. Two such adventurers joined Prince Aiden when he entered the catacombs to find his brother Albra. During this harrowing journey, Aiden was forced to strike down his own father, who had been reanimated as a foul entity called the Skeleton King. Continuing on, Aiden soon found Diablo himself. After a great battle of fire and steel, the Lord of Terror was defeated. But this ending is not a happy one. For Diablo had twisted young Albrecht's body into his own demonic form. In slaying the demon, Aiden had slain his younger brother. Distraught, Aiden pulled the soul stone from Albrecht and plunged it into his own body. In the weeks that followed, Aiden would seek comfort with a local witch named Adria slowly succumbing to Diablo's influence. That's basically the end of Diablo 1. So if you're keeping track of what's going on, that was the end of Diablo 1 when um, when Aiden killed Diablo, a.k.a. Um, Albrecht, his brother, um, and then put the stone in himself. That's the end of Diablo 1. And now, well, with Aiden traveling, this is the start of Diablo 2. Aiden eventually traveled east from Tristram and became known as the Dark Wanderer, set on liberating Bale and Mephisto. Yep, Korig. As the Dark Wanderer traveled east, 
a new group of adventurers arrived in Tristram. They rescued Deckard Cain from the ruins of Tristram, who implored them to give chase. Soon the party found themselves taking part in a dangerous pursuit of the Lord of Terror. Following the Dark Wanderer's path towards the tomb of Talrasha, the adventurers would face the lesser evils of Andariel and Duriel, who had rallied to Diablo's aid. Instead of Talrasha, they discovered Tyriel imprisoned in the tomb. Baal, still using Talrasha as a vessel, had escaped imprisonment to join Diablo in his guise as the Dark Wanderer. Together they had overcome Tyriel and trapped him in the prison he'd made for Baal so long ago. The heroes pressed on to find Mephisto, the Lord of Hatred, deep in the jungles of Kurast. Once more, the heroes were too late to stop Diablo, as he shed what little of Aiden remained, reverting exactly, to Audrey. his monstrous demonic form, before returning to the Burning Hells to rally his demonic legions. Mephisto remained behind, believing he could defeat the brave pursuers. His confidence was misplaced. The Lord of Hatred was defeated and sealed in the Sapphire Soul Stone. The heroes followed the Lord of Terror into the Burning Hells, thinking only of Sanctuary and not the grim fate that likely awaited them there. At Tyriel's request, the heroes confronted the corrupted angel Isuel on the Plains of Despair. In slaying him, the heroes freed Isuel's spirit and he informed them that the prime evils knew how to corrupt the soul stones. With this information, Cain sent the heroes to the Hellforge to destroy the Sapphire Soul Stone, in the hopes that this would prevent Mephisto from manifesting in this world ever again. Once there, they had to defeat a demon called Hephasto the Armorer, a towering monstrosity with wide horns. His powerful arms strengthened by thousands and thousands of strikes with his Hellforge hammer against the anvil. After successfully destroying the Sapphire Soul Stone, the heroes traveled deep into the wastes of the Burning Hells to face the Lord of Terror himself. Still D2. They fought a fierce, pitched battle against increasingly dire odds deep in Diablo's own realm. But the heroes fought and defeated Diablo. They pulled the shard from Diablo's head, trapping his essence inside, and returned to the Hellforge to destroy it as well. With this momentous achievement, only Bail remained to threaten Sanctuary. This is the expansion. Unfortunately for us, to the Diablo one II. primeval can unleash inconceivable devastation. As the heroes struggled with Diablo in Hell, Bail, Lord of Destruction, set his demonic army on a course to Mount Ariat, annihilating all in his path on the way to his prize, the World Star. Survivor accounts describe the primeval atop his litter, surveying the barbarian city of Sesheron with ravenous malice and an insatiable lust for carnage. His vision for sanctuary was a wasteland stained with blood. It is both humbling and horrifying to know how close he was to achieving that goal. Thanks to the bravery of the barbarians in the town of Haragath at the base of Mount Ariat, Bale's army was temporarily repelled buying time enough for reinforcements and the heroes that had slain Diablo and Mephisto to arrive. They fought their way through Bale's army, up the mountain, and finally into the very heart of Sanctuary, the World Stone Keep. Though our heroes ultimately defeated Bale, they could not stop his poisonous malice from infecting the World Stone. A difficult choice had to be made, and so it was. Tyriel chose to destroy the World Stone, rather than let it fall to corruption. He hurled his great sword Eldruin at the World Stone, shattering it. Yeah, we're gonna watch that cinematic later, where Tyriel breaks the World Stone. That is one of the coolest fucking cinematics ever. Ever, 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 ever. The fucking feeling I had the first time I saw that shit. Yeah, chills? Every time, we're gonna watch that cinematic later for sure. Some of its shards fell to earth, imbued with power. The World Stone was nearly as large as the mountain that housed it, and its destruction turned the imposing peak of Mount Ariat Flashbang. into nothing more than a vast crater. Local settlements and tribes scattered to the wind, 
many forced to seek new homes. And it is in this new world, deeply wounded by the treachery of the prime evils, that the next chapter in our history unfolded. The tragic tale of Lear, Diablo's assault on heaven, and Malthael's betrayal, and why so few of us remain. <laughs> Take care in the darkness. There's more lurking out there than the wind. <laughs> Difficult choice. Motherfucker Tyrael came out at the end. No helping in the fight and was like, okay, I'll break the big shiny. <laughs> Is this what the time travel fixes? I'm just waiting for something to be undone. No, amazing Amanda. This new lore has no time travel. The new... <laughs> The new canon lore for Diablo has no time travel in it. The the time travel uh, that undid things was basically... The time travel was in the second video when Lilith comes back to, uh, to have her Nephilim fight in the Sin War. Um, hold on, let me just... Let's just get a little scene back there. Um, when Lilith came back uh, for the Sin War and all that stuff, that's where they originally had all of the um, time travel because basically, um, uh, what is it? Hey, do, are you having a problem here, video? There we go. Um, Lilith coming back from the void isn't very well explained. Uh, the fact that heaven and hell just found out about sanctuary despite the world stone, and then heaven and hell came to the came to sanctuary and fought on it, and then Lilith just mysteriously disappeared again, uh, magically banished to the void, and nothing, no one banished her. Um, there's also like this super mage that has cosmic power and everything. And they're like, uh oh, uh oh, this doesn't fit with any of the lore that we've made for the games. So then they rewound time and everyone agreed to not talk about the things that happened. And then they just continued on like normal. And the story we're seeing is the story like normal where every, where another thing happened and all the heaven and hell just agreed not to talk about it. So the time travel has already happened and uh it's uh they've i think they've just hand waved it all away but everything that's happening is actually real nothing gets undone this all straight up happened no time travel no erasing no resetting thank god by the way <laughs> a little writing oopsie fucky yeah exactly got your actually voice going on for a second there They've made a couple things that I'm not a big fan of. The, I think they've given the World Stone too much power. The fact that this thing had infinite power and nobody really wielded it for any meaningful purpose. And the fact that like Bale got there and Bale's like, ooh, the World Stone, infinite power for me. I know, I'm just gonna touch it, boop, and corrupt it. It's like, you couldn't think of more cool shit to do than just corrupt it? I feel like there's a I feel like there's a lot more stuff you could do with that thing. Bale sticks his dick in it exactly. Okay, so let's cover that video. Because that one was a long one. That was a 14 minute video with a shit ton of lore in it. Um I'll hit the highlights that you need to know. Basically, hell uh was uh in in uh, turmoil they had kind of like their own little hell civil war where the three prime evils uh got banished to earth they got banished to sanctuary uh because they lost their uh, they lost the war and um is hell not always in turmoil more so than usual usually the prime evils are up on top and the lesser evils are down below but something happened that kicked the prime evils out and the prime evils got uh, banished to our earth. Mephisto, Bale, and Diablo got banished to earth. And then as those three were kind of roaming around fucking shit up on earth, uh, Tyrael, the angel, was like, uh, that's not good. We should do something about that. And so he created these stones to capture the prime evils 
and so that they couldn't keep fucking everything up. So Tyrael made this group called the Haradrim, uh, very powerful mages, and they went hunting Diablo and Mephisto and Bale to trap them in these stones. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we they found out that the primevals actually had this plan all along. The primevals wanted to get banished, and the primevals wanted to get trapped in the soul stones because they could corrupt them. So then they needed to destroy the soul stones and kill them again. Lost in hell and lost on earth. Ha! <laughs> Losers, exactly. This earth isn't like our earth, right? Or is it like in the past sort of thing? You know, Amazing Amanda, that's a good question. I like to think of it as, uh, it's like an, it's either our Earth or an alternate version of Earth kind of thing. It's like an alternate universe kind of thing. But this is supposed to basically be our Earth. They are humans, and uh, this, this is basically Earth. Like a Middle Earth. Yeah, kind of like a Middle Earth. But yeah, it's supposed to basically be Earth. Everyone calls it Sanctuary because that's like, you know, how every every video game world has their own name for the planet. Um, that's their name for the planet, but it's basically just Earth kind of thing. Biblically accurate, yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, Diablo got trapped in his stone. And then uh, the Prince uh, Albrecht found it and jammed the stone into his forehead and became Diablo. And then his brother came along and killed him. And then he took the soul stone out and put it into his forehead. And then he got killed. <laughs> <laughs> Why did he do that? Yeah, so Audrey. <laughs> so the first guy stuck the stuck the soul stone in his forehead because he was kind of like Diablo's spirit was like Hey, why, why don't you put the soul stone in your forehead? Hey, why, don't, why don't you? Oh man, look at that. It's a real nice forehead stone. You should just stick that in your forehead. And uh, Albrecht was kind of young and naive. And uh, he's like, sounds good, man. Boop. It's uh, <laughs> a real intrusive thought, exactly. Uh, and then when when uh, Aiden killed him, uh, he s took the stone out of uh, Diablo's head and decided that the only way to contain Diablo was to stick it in his head and then he would contain Diablo within him. And he was also very wrong and he became Diablo too. Best idea ever, I don't, it's the end of Diablo one and I never beat Diablo one. Um, were you guys confused when you beat Diablo one and the guy takes the stone out and says, ooh, big red stone. Ah! <laughs> Did you guys wonder what the fuck was going on? <laughs> that seems so crazy to me. <laughs> no, explained that he thought he was it was uh he was trapping him. Oh, they did explain it! They did say that that he thought he was trying to contain him. Okay, gotcha. Okay, gotcha. Okay, all right. So to me, it seemed like a crazy thing, but I guess if you played the game, um, it made sense. He was trying to contain Diablo within himself. I can handle this guy, I killed him. <laughs> yeah, that's basically it, yeah. Um, and uh, Diablo 2 should have been called Diablo 2. Fucking true, yep. <laughs> He tripped and fell and accidentally landed in his forehead. Yeah. <laughs> when you kill the wizard dude, he has a book that says how to trap Diablo. Ah, okay, gotcha. So yeah, he jams it in his head and then basically he wanders to the east thinking that he'll find when he, the 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 stone in his forehead gives him like wild crazy visions and nightmares and he feels like going east is the only way to cure these these visions and these voices, um, but it's actually Diablo basically pushing him to the east. Uh, I think it's kind of like how there always must be a Lich King. Yeah, gotcha, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have 5.5 hours to play it and see for yourself. I almost thought of trying to play through it, but honestly, Diablo 1's a kind of a rough play these days. It did not age great. Um, 
Couldn't he just yank the stone out of his head? He could have Disco Zombie, but he didn't think he was losing the battle against Diablo. He thought he was controlling him. He was just misled. Concentrated Diablo jammed in the skull. Clearly the right choice. I know, right? Always to the east, yeah. Diablo was edging him? Yeah, basically, yes. <laughs> Then he would also have a gaping hole in his forehead. True. If he took the stone out, he'd have a big hole in his forehead and nobody, that's a bad look for anybody, right? <laughs> he feels drawn to the other soul stones through whispers and terrible dreams. Marius explains some of this during Diablo 2 in between the act cutscenes. Yes, yep, and plate. And we're gonna get to those too. Yeah. You can use a non-Diablo stone in your forehead then. I guess he could have just swapped it out, right? I'll take the demon stone out and I'll put a new stone in. <laughs> so wait, how long are you gonna stream today? Uh, Viscardi, we're probably looking at like a 14 hour stream today. It's gonna be a big stream. I always go with the sayings, insanity over vanity. <laughs> yeah, big, big stream today. So the stones are just the rings in Lord of the Rings. Um, it's like it's like all three stones are like the one ring uh, where they all are the essence of the evil ones kind of thing. Essentially created a gem socket in his own head. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh no, Lexi, an actual discord call. Wow. <laughs> um, so. Diablo, you know, goes and frees his brothers, uh, Mephisto and uh, and Bale, and then they go try to retake hell, and they go to try to conquer heaven, and they all get killed, and all their soul stones get smashed. Um, that's basically the end of Diablo 2. This video kind of ended with Diablo 2 expansion, right? Bale is at the world stone, and he's corrupting it, and you kill him. That's basically the end of Diablo 2. Uh, and then the next video goes into a little bit of Diablo 3 stuff. And I will say, some of the Diablo 3 lore is a little wishy-washy, but, uh, you know, it's still fun. And uh, basically, some of the cinematics for Diablo 3 are some of the best, and we're going to watch those in a little bit. But first, got to learn all of our lore. Gonna miss on the beginning of Diablo 4. I've got something to do tonight. I'll be there two to three uh, hours after. Oh, man, Vizik. And here's the thing, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I've got like stuff to do this weekend, so I want to basically no life the game all weekend, but I'm going to be painting my bedroom and assembling a bed and installing carpet and all these things this weekend, so I'm not going to get as much Diablo 4 time as I want. Also, another reason that I'm not doing the hardcore race. Sadly, I would love to do the hardcore race, but I've got too many other responsibilities that I want to make sure I, I take care of. So we're just going to enjoy the game at a nice, relaxing pace. We're going to open up a community clan and everybody can join. We can share resources. We can share information. We can help each other out. It's going to be great. What color are you painting your bedroom? It's like a blue gray. It's like Walden blue. It's a very nice kind of deep gray blue color, which is nice. Installing carpet, had no idea you were so handy. Okay, well, I'm not actually installing it myself. <laughs> I'm prepping it for the carpet installers to install it. I'm not doing it myself. I'm not that handy. <coughs> Couldn't someone else do the hardcore run in your name? That would be handy, but no, I don't think so. <laughs> we can share wives, right, Tech? No, Lexi, my wife. <laughs> make sure you vent it out i'm painting my bathroom and whew yeah i know we're gonna have to do some definite big big uh big uh, uh venting definitely um oh yeah hey all dave that's fine man yeah love seeing your outlast trial streams i sent my brother your vod link because i know he'll get lots of laughs from it man outlast trials have been amazing i've really been loving that uh, okay, so, uh, <laughs> poor K. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the next video chat. Let's take a look at the fourth and final video. This one just came out yesterday. Coming. This is the last of the official Diablo 4 canon lore videos. We got lots of cinematics. We're going to watch some Carbot videos. How many of you have watched Carbot before? 
Carbot is probably some of the most entertaining, genuinely funny, spectacular, fucking, oh, so good, right? Isn't Carbot good? Carbot's got an entire series on Diablo. So fucking good. We're going to watch a bunch of those too. Um, and we're going to be watching a, a bunch of legitimate uh, old cinematics too. We got, it's a big old Diablo day, chat. We're going to have just nothing but fun looking at Diablo stuff. Carbot's fucking incredible. Okay. F episode four. Let's go. Come in, sit down. You've let all the bloody heat out. Oh, sorry. Sorry, this Laura. Is the coldest night I can recall in this frozen west. I'm no chef, but I've managed the stew from what little food remains. Fortify yourself. This is the final story I have to tell you. And you will need your strength to endure. This is the tale of the end of days. I told you of the brave heroes that defeated Diablo and Baal, and of the destruction of the World Stone and Mount Ariot by Tyriel, the Archangel of Justice. In the aftermath, his essence dispersed, and though no angel had done so before, Tyriel was able to restore his form in the realm of Pandemonium. After decades away, Tyriel returned to the High Heavens. There, he tried to convince his fellow members of the Angiris Council that they were meant to protect the innocent, and that the fate of humanity was pivotal to the future of the eternal conflict. However, they remained committed to their laws, leaving Tyriel no choice but to renounce his angelic nature, shedding his wings to embrace mortality before being cast out of the heavens. And so he fell willingly to Sanctuary, a shining star that landed in the ruins of Tristram Cathedral. New Tristram had established itself just outside the ruins of its predecessor. A thriving settlement, home to Deckard Cain and his young ward Leah. She was the daughter of Adria, who had once lived in Tristram, and grew into a wise young woman under Cain's mentorship. A group of adventurers from across Sanctuary set out to investigate the fallen star. Instead, they found a man who had lost his memory. In an effort to help this fallen stranger, Cain sent adventurers to recover the man's sword, broken and scattered in the surrounding lands. The quest would cost Deckard his life at the hands of Magda, the powerful leader of a fanatical coven devoted to Belial. With his last breaths, Cain managed to repair the stranger's sword. In doing so, he repaired Tyriel's memory, as well as the Sword of Justice itself, Eldruin. For this deed, and for many, many more, I believe history will judge Deckard Cain amongst the greatest Haradrim, representing the best of what the Haradric Order can be. Those CCs are fucking up His pretty bad. His contributions to the Haradrim and to humanity cannot be overstated. <laughs> the day he left us was a dark day for us all. In that moment of deep loss and grief, Leah was overcome by a dark power within herself. When the power burst free, it was strong enough to drive Magda away. This was the first sign that her destiny was cruelly marked by forces greater than any knew. After Cain's death, the adventurers Lear and Tyriel tracked Magda to Chaldeum, where, unbeknownst to them, Belial was impersonating the ruler of the region. Their pursuits ended in the dry deserts of Kedjistan, where they confronted Magda and struck her down, avenging Cain's death. The heroes found another ally in Adria, Leah's mother, who wanted to help her daughter contain the growing darkness. She helped them uncover the location of the Black Soul Stone, an extraordinary artifact created by the renegade Haradrim Zoltan Kool, which could trap multiple essences of both angel and demon, then permanently destroy them. Black Soul Stone in hand, they confronted Belial and revealed his great deception. Defeating him, they sealed him inside this soul stone prison. But, as we have seen time and time again, evil is never idle. Okay, I just want to say, so, um, in my D&D campaign, Mar, I named basically every place, person, and thing after a video game reference of one thing or not. And you know the character that everyone loves, Ula? 
<laughs> the very silly voice, Ula. Ula Kotlins is literally Zoltan Cool with all the all the letters mixed up. <laughs> Ula Ula Kotlins is literally the same letters of Zoltan Cool. <laughs> Ooh, <no. laughs> Asmadan, the Lord of Sin, had undertaken an audacious invasion of Sanctuary seeking the Black Soulstone for himself. All the great evils save he and Diablo had been trapped in the Soulstone, giving Asmodan an opportunity to become the prime evil. His vast demonic army erupted from Ariat Crater, the scar left behind by the World Stone's destruction. The party hurried to aid the forces of Bastion's Keep, the only defense against Asmodan's forces. Though the fortress had been battered, the adventurers fought through legions of demons and overcame the Lord of Sin at the heart of the crater, sealing him in the Black Soulstone as well. It seemed as though the tide was turning in humanity's favor. But Adria had other plans. She had lied about the Black Soulstone, having used it to mark the souls of all seven great evils for containment, while leaving Diablo unbound. The witch then offered Leah her own daughter, as a vessel for Diablo's return. <gasps> An act she had planned since her child's conception. <gasps> when Aiden sought solace with her in Tristram, Adria had already pledged herself to the Lord of Terror's service. The <laughs> Lord of, of Terrence. Care, she used the prince's <laughs> torment to her advantage, allowing Diablo to deepen his hold on the prince. When he left as the Dark Wanderer, so too did Adria. Soon after, she bore his child, Leah, whom she left in Chaldeum under a friend's care. Children should not be punished for their parents' sins, no matter how grave they may be. From the moment of her birth, Leah's fate was tied inextricably to Diablo, his essence part of her creation. With Adria's betrayal revealed, Diablo seized control of the Black Soulstone using it to channel the essences of all the Lords of Hell into himself. Brimming with power, he twisted Leah's body into a new horrific form, the Primeval. With his newfound strength, he set his eyes on a prize far greater than our world, the utter destruction of the High Heavens. With his unheralded power, the Lord of Terror breached the Diamond Gates of the High Heavens. He single-handedly routed Imperius, leader of the Angiris Council, with barely a thought. The prime evil opened hell rifts inside the Silver City, unleashing the minions of the Burning Hells, leaving him to continue towards the Crystal Arch. As demons ravaged the Silver City, the heroes came to Heaven's aid. They fought their way through hordes of demon kind, aiding the heavens where they could and soon arrived atop the Silver Spire to battle Diablo himself. Against all odds, the prime evil was defeated, his essence trapped in the Black Soulstone. Tyriel returned to the Angiris Council as a mortal, now embodying the aspect of wisdom. And for a moment, it seemed like Sanctuary might see peace. But, as you know well, peace does not last. All was not well with the High Heavens. Decades before Diablo's assault on the High Heavens, Malthiel had abandoned the Council, the Heavens, and his position the are fucked. of wisdom. The ravages of the eternal conflict must have taken their toll on Malthiel's mind. I often wonder what he saw that convinced him to forsake wisdom for death. Malthiel had long desired an end to the eternal conflict, and finally saw his chance with Diablo's defeat. With the seven great evils gone, he turned his attention to humanity. But Malthael was not interested in winning our hearts and minds. His solution was far simpler, far colder. To Malthael, humanity would never be more than demon spawn. And for the eternal conflict to reach its conclusion, all demon kind needed to be eradicated. But to achieve his ultimate goal, Malthael had to retrieve the Black Soul Stone, which was now in the hands of what remained of the Haradrim. <laughs> in that first confrontation with Malthael, in the black tunnels of the tomb of Rakus, I faced death himself. 
as my brethren fell and died. I was protected behind a magical shield that Tyriel raised using his sword. When we emerged onto the city streets, we were met with horror beyond comprehension. Prize in hand, Malthael and his reapers laid waste to Westmarch. The grisly slaughter I witnessed there nearly destroyed me. They were harvesting the souls of the people. With each death, Malthael grew more powerful. Malthael soon took the Black Soulstone to the Pandemonium Fortress, where he began to manipulate its power. Struggling to find where he had gone, the adventurers turned to the only person on Sanctuary who might know Malthael's location, the traitor Adria. The witch, however, did not wish to cooperate and transformed into a terrifying monster, it powered by blood magic. Delivering final justice against Adria's betrayal, they struck down the abomination and set out for the Pandemonium Fortress to confront Malthael. Malthael! It was too late. Malthael had already sent the Black Soulstone to Sanctuary, and it was fulfilling its dark purpose, tearing the demonic essence out of every single person. Freeing the spirits of their own kin and leaders, the heroes became one with death, and were finally able to fight against Malthael on even ground. A great battle ensued, and in a last-ditch effort to secure victory, Malthael shattered the Black Soulstone to take on the power of the great evil still trapped inside. The heroes valiantly rallied in defense of Sanctuary, the power of the spirits within allowing them to defeat death itself. The aftermath of Malthael's use of the Black Soulstone saw Tyrael gone from Sanctuary and count- So, listen. This is, this is one of my small issues with the power scale of the game because they're like the ultimate prime evil with the power of all the demons ever, uh, you know, is what we should all fear because that would make it too strong. And so Diablo becomes the prime evil and we fucking kill him. We're like, oh, fucking prime evil, little bitch. And we kill it. And then an angel takes on the power of all the demons and is like the angel of death plus all demons. And then we kill that. And it's like, guys, what are we really worried about? Apparently we can just kill it whenever it shows up. Douglas, <laughs> dad. What happened to Diablo remains a mystery that haunts me. I chose solitude and ale over futile efforts to bring light back into our Nephilim, world. man. But there are times such as this where I feel hope struggling to take root once more. But to hope for salvation while doing nothing to attain it brings only ruin. I have learned this many times over. Judge a person by their actions, not their words. Lilith has returned. You sense the daughter of hatred in the growing shadows, as do I. I can no longer fight with steel and blood. But perhaps the knowledge I've shared will act as an armor in your own battle with the coming darkness. Take care, young scholar, wherever your path may lead you. Um, you know, I guess you, you make a good point. I guess that is literally why they're afraid of the Nephilim, right? The Nephilim uh, is, uh, is literally more powerful than all of them. So I guess it makes sense that that would be, uh, that would be what they're afraid of. Um. Yeah, that, that is exactly what they're worried about. Is Lilith the daughter of Diablo? A uh, daughter of Mephisto, actually. What happened to our Nephilim in Diablo 4? You know, that's a good question. Does anybody know what exactly happened to our Nephilim in Diablo 4? I don't know if they really uh, tied that all up. Did they? The power scale bugs me too. Uh, used to run D&D &D 3.5 campaigns using a homebrew. Limited power to six levels maximum. Though monsters could and often were enough higher in power, which resulted in some terrifying encounters. Interesting. Retirement. Yeah, the, the Nephilim just retired. Time jump. We probably died to old age. But like the world stone is gone. So wouldn't there be more Nephilim popping up? Why are there uh, why are there no Nephilims anymore? World stone is gone. We're unchecked. We're all turning into Nephilim now. Don't they mention in the beginning? Just didn't listen to the intro of Diablo 4? Maybe? Chilling in heaven or something? Maybe. 
the two-part answer? Oh, interesting. I think everyone's a Nephilim. That would be my thought too. Isn't like everybody just now Nephilim or something like that? Nephilim was unleashed because the world stone break? Yeah. The intro to D4 does kind of hint at all children of Sanctuary being Nephilim. Okay, so it's basically, it's basically everyone's scariest fucking worst, worst case scenario. <laughs> Part one, everyone is a Neph, always has been. Their bloodlines, however, are diluted. Part two, some people were immune. Uh, okay, okay, interesting. It's like a third eye thing. I need to unlock the power and Lilith is the key. Oh, that's why Lilith is awakening the Nephilim within all of them. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. So that's basically the lore. There you go. That's the four big lore videos for getting started with Diablo 4, right? There was heaven and hell, Inarius an angel, Lilith a demon, made babies that were Nephilim. Nephilim, very, very scary. Um, Lilith got banished to the void, Inarius disappeared. Although, okay, okay, hold on. One other small thing. One other small thing. They said that Inarius was captured by hell and is still trapped there. In these videos, they said Inarius is still trapped in hell. What? <laughs> but like, he's not though. <laughs> also in the more recent seasons, uh, they added books of lore, yeah. This is before Diablo 4 then? Well, this is this is current Lorath in the Frozen Peaks telling us currently what's happening, saying that Inarius is still to this day trapped in hell. Uh He is but he's able to appear in the temple. Is that real Kendigo? Is that really truly the story? Is that really didn't he say it is rumored? Oh, did he? I want to know, because he made it sound like Inarius is still trapped in hell, but like literally he's not. Is it a projection? Is it a fake? I don't know. I don't know. Picture it didn't happen, right? Okay, so. He's bound to the temple. But like, how is he bound? Is that like the only place he can project himself to or something like that? I remember in one of the videos Blizzard did, Inarius is free and restored the church. Well, that's just it. In some of the old lore, Inarius broke free and started the church, right? But like, that's not what they said here. They said he got, he was trapped. So, to oopsie whoopsies, we got chat GPT to finish our silly Diablo 4 writing. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> Okay, so that is that gets you totally caught up for all the lore that you need to know um, about uh, about uh, about things.